What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock, what you should be looking out for for the future. I'm also going to break down why Unearth Neo crashed very hard today, but what this also means for the future, what you should be looking out for. Now, before I break anything down, give you guys my price prediction for tomorrow. I'll talk about why Neo came crashing down super, super hard today, what's going on in China, what their president actually said that's very important and also why i have not lost faith in neo despite this i do have to mention a couple of things before starting firstly i'm not a financial planner so don't take any of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this it not only benefits me it benefits the entire neo community as a whole and the last things if you guys can please check out the weeple link down below and in the description if you sign up for weeple the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks each worth up to two thousand dollars and the best part is any of these 12 free stocks could be a free neo share a free tesla share or a mix of all all of them it's a limited time offer the offer ends in just six days check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video so at the time of recording this neo is down about almost 16 percent for the day it did come tumbling down super hard it was down like 25 percent at one point at about this eight dollar and 38 cent mark then we got a nice bounce after that we've been holding up okay since then but it is still very oversold and it is still very low compared to where it was a couple of days ago neo was at eleven dollars and 21 cents since last week on Friday. Today, and currently we're in the nines, so we came down very, very hard. I wanna talk about why this is happening and why I have not lost faith in Neo. So I made a video, guys, like two days ago. I released it on Saturday. And in this video, I drew out the golden pocket for Neo. And I mentioned that the golden pocket was between $7.87 and about $7.04. And I also talked about the fact that we have these gaps right here. So if Neo filled the gap, it could come down to the very low eights, if not that $7 range. So I mentioned this was very possible. However, I did not know when this would actually happen. My prediction was that it would happen later during the year, maybe after uh, the midterm election, maybe after... Uh, the FOMC meeting. So when I came to this conclusion, a lot of people were not happy to hear this. And I personally did not expect Neo to come crashing this hard this quickly. But I mentioned something else if you guys were paying attention. The first thing I mentioned is the fact that during this big crash, it would not be the end of the world. And I am not going to panic because I'm looking at the fundamentals of this company. And I know it still is very strong despite everything going on around the world. Now for the short term, looking at global tensions, looking at the fears that are really transcending themselves around different people around the world, looking at what's happening with chips with China, not to mention more tensions with the country. It is leading to lots of uncertainty about NEO, which is why NEO was coming down. But from a fundamental basis, it's important to note that they are still very strong with European expansion. And many buyers are actually excited to be buying at these prices for the long-term future. Now, it is also important to note that considering the global tensions, there is a risk involved in, in, in buying into NEO. And I'm sure many of you guys are well aware of this, but this doesn't change the fact that it, the potential in this company still exists exists and neo is going to be an absolute giant in my opinion nonetheless so what's going on in the markets what's going on with neo what do i see happening so far why did neo crash the market is starting to rally a bit we are starting to push up right now the fear and greed index is on neutral mode as the market is showing some signs of improvement but looking back at what actually ended up going down we have to go back a couple of weeks we can see right here with the whole semiconductor industry in China, tensions are just arising, especially with the current administration. And this is leading to big failures in this chip export uh, uh, situation. So right now, there's a lots of loss and faith in China to actually continue with it. So the disrupting chip industry is having a big effect on these tech companies because right now, you know, the, the exports with China right now are just not, not having the best of relationships so we are seeing this really get in the way i can't really go into like the full-on details about it. i just want it to be as blunt as possible there are lots of tensions lots of regulations are coming and it is slowing down the efficiency that was there before and also the us is just not as fixated on continuing business the way it was before so that is having a negative effect on you know the chinese industry chinese evs at least right now and on top of that this could lead to a big divide in the future. 
Now, the thing about Neo that's important to note is the fact that they're still producing the large majority of their manufacturing in China, and they still have a massive business over there. So that still makes me very bullish long term as the EV sector is growing. They also did something intelligent, and that's the fact that, as Seeking Alpha mentioned, they've been expanding to places all over the world. The expansion to Europe was a very intelligent move they made now because once they're in these places, if they continue to you know remain as nonpartisan as possible, as they continue to grow and improve their business, it's going to really help them long term. They could continue to sell more cars overseas. So in the European markets, I'm still confident that they are going to do well. And I do believe it's going to really help with their deliveries, their data and everything else from over there. On top of that, what else is very big that happened, and this is the main reason as to why Neo ended up coming down, with the tensions, with, with lots of uncertainty, and all these things together, right? All these things were essentially uh, kind of like piling in together simultaneously. And then on top of that, something was stated by President Xi of China. He actually mentioned something important. This is actually affecting the whole EV sector. Lots of Chinese companies like Alibaba were actually seeing that he mentioned that China is going to be focused on political ideology instead of economic growth and cooperation. So this led to lots of fear because this is like the end result of all the tensions. This is like the boiling pots that's actually starting to overflow. It led to a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I will be honest, this fear, uncertainty, and doubt is a real thing. It will have an effect on NEO and the overall market. But like I said before, I'm still confident that it's not necessarily going to kill everything. It's not the end of the world. And I say that because of the fundamentals of this company as more investors start to come in. You have to remember something. Tensions may exist, sure. But if you look at NEO, all right, Neo is available on the Hong Kong markets. On top of that, it's very, very oversold. You can actually zoom out. It still is extremely oversold. I would personally buy during a, a zone like this. However, I would just be dollar cost averaging because the true bottom is not necessarily uh, uh, kind of like confirmed just yet. Now, it is in a very, very oversold state, so that is a buying opportunity. But remember, it is risky. There's a risk involved when it doing so. But for the long term, I'm still very bullish because of what on earth the past is telling us. If you look at just a couple of weeks ago, Neo had their Q3 deliveries report. And you guys could see they're up 29% year over year. They delivered 82,000 vehicles, right? from the year alone. That's up 24% year over year from that alone. And in total, they have 249,000 vehicles delivered. And if you look at their data, compared to the previous year, we could see that Neo actually did better than many people would have expected. The expectations were, oh, Neo would do under 30,000. They'd only do 28,000. They'd do 25,000. They ended up doing over 31,000 deliveries. And they, despite all the hardships, they managed to actually keep up with the 2021 records. So they still did very well when it comes to the numbers, guys. So am I losing faith in Neo? No, no. I do believe tensions will affect uh, the output of our entire economy, the USA and China. But despite the tensions, despite all the hardships that are going on, I'm still very confident that NEO will prevail over time. And we also have a lot of gaps to the upside. We are going to come back and start filling these gaps as time goes on. Is it going to happen overnight? The answer is no. It's going to take a little bit of time. But I'm still not losing faith in this company. NEO has gaps up in the 14s. It has gaps all the way up, I think right here. Uh, actually, I'm not seeing it. But there are, there, are, there are tons of gaps up there which suggest it is going to make a comeback. It's very oversold. The company fundamentals are getting better and better. Neo is getting closer and closer to profitability, which I believe they will achieve over the next few quarters. I really believe they will achieve it. I also believe that there are strong deliveries reports, their strong data, their transparency, their compliance with different countries, their expansion, the fact that they're developing technology all over the world, their AI technology, we're talking about like NAMI, their sedans, all these things put together still make me bullish long term. And I will be careful by not going all in on one company. I'm not going all in on Neo, but I am willing to put in money that I believe could actually be 
like used for this, despite the potential risks out there, I'm willing to put it in there and I'm willing to wait as long as it takes because I know this company will make a comeback. It just needs time. Remember, the fundamentals are strong. It's not falling because of fundamentals. It's falling because of external tensions. So it's not Neo itself's fault. All right. I want to make that as clear as possible. For the short term, what am I anticipating for Neo? We are very oversold. So what tends to happen to stocks when they're this oversold is they tend to get some relief. It already started a bit. I do anticipate some more shop in this zone right here, especially trying to come back to that $10 range. I still anticipate it's going to show lots of signs of chop and have resistance right there. But eventually, if we hold up, if the market continues to hold up, you could slowly come back above that $10 range. Again, I'm going to be watching for that. Very, very possible. And a break above that gives this thing potential to actually go a little bit higher. Now, I know it's like frustrating. I know it's shocking for lots of people, but you have to look back at the entire EV sector. Like if we look at Xpeng, for example, this is also down pretty hard. This was down like 20% and now it's like coming back. It's like down 11%, 12% now. Tesla was down pretty hard for the day, but it started to come back too amidst the news because the whole market is pumping and we are starting to see a bit of a comeback from here. So if a lot of these Chinese EVs continue to rally to the upside since they are very oversold, I want to see Neil break above $10 tomorrow. If we don't break $10, we're most likely going to range trade between 9.38 and that. I'm sorry, not 9.38, 9 point, like around 9.3 to 9.4, like around that zone right there. So I'm going to anticipate some a lot of range trading between 9.3 and $10, just trading back and forth for some time. But if we get a clean break above 10 bucks tomorrow, which is very possible, we could get a 200 EMA retest, which is right here. If we retest the 200 EMA, a nice break above that could cause this thing to actually push up a bit. And we could slowly start to recover, even though a lot of people are panicking, it is still very possible. Now, one thing that is risky, one thing that's kind of scary would be the Elon Musk situation. Is Elon Musk going to sell some more of these shares of Tesla? If he does end up doing it relatively soon, Tesla could take a big hit. This could have an effect on Neo and many other EVs too. However, they are very oversold, so they, they may not drop as hard as you know Tesla may in that case. So it's not going to be as impactful, but I want to see this thing continue to push back to the tens. At least even if we do it slowly, that would be completely fine. Uh, if we do continue to do it, I'm hoping for a nice push above $10. That's what I'm hoping for. I want to see this thing hold $10. All right. So until then, it's going to take a little bit of time. It may take a couple of days for us to get back up there. But for tomorrow specifically, like I mentioned, I want to see us approach 10 bucks a share. Let's see if we can uh, come close to it and hold it. If we don't do it, it's going to need some time to consolidate in this range, slowly build momentum and slowly start making that comeback. All right. But until then, I want to see a nice push. I want to see volume continue. Um, I'm, I'm still very optimistic. You could even argue that we have an inverse head and shoulders here. So maybe we're going to slowly get a push back to 10. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes. But until then, guys, please remain calm, cool, and collected. And please know this was very hard for lots of people. This was very hard for many investors. Nobody is obligated to buy a stock or hold it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. All right? It's your own money, your own choice. Take the risks you have to take. Not financial advice, by the way. But for Neil personally, like I mentioned before, in my honest opinion, I do believe Neo is going to make a comeback. The short term is difficult, but these are good buying opportunities because in the long term, I still believe the company will prevail. I do believe it. And I want to also note something else. Tensions, situations were very tough before. All right. And we saw Neo very close to 20 bucks a share back in September. I believe it's going to come back there. Like I'm, I'm pretty confident we are going to come back to the upside right there. We also have this big gap up here in the 20s. So like I mentioned, there are lots of gaps that suggest it is gonna slowly start to fill these gaps. It's gonna come back. I really believe it will. But for the short term, it's gonna require lots of time. So be patient and take this as an opportunity if you guys want, all right? We're seeing the EMA starting to cross. Hopefully we get a nice 1340 EMA cross, hoping that we continue to push up. All right, that's basically what I have for this video. For tomorrow, I'm going to be wanting this $10 range. I want to see if we could approach this range pretty quickly. It's going to, it may take, uh, it may be very slow, but if, if we don't approach it, then I'm going to be watching some support levels. 
And that's basically what I have for this video, all right? So thank you all for listening. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. Do what's best for your own portfolios, your own minds, your own decisions. Please remain calm, cool, and collected, and get ready, guys. The future is still very bright. This is just another one of the many obstacles that many companies in the world have to face. But we know one thing, and that is we are not giving up. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Neo to the moon, because the long-term future is still incredibly bright, in my opinion. And peace out.